you have Do you to, grow any of the herbs that you use? I don't presently because um, I realize that that would be a lot more work for me at this point. But um, it's something that as I get more hands with me, I'll definitely start cultivating more. So where do you get your products from? Goodness, as far as West Africa, by way of New York, and as close as Sevenanda. Sevenanda has a beautiful herb counter. Like, I really like the way that um, they have their selection processes and every once in a while, springtime will come around and you will find that it was a very good crop on a particular botanical, um, like for instance. If I go into Sevenanda and I see that the marigold flowers are, um, as they're calling it, calendula, has come really vibrant, really orange, and they have like the whole flower as opposed to just the petals. Like, I'm literally screaming for joy at the bulk counter because what that means is what may have been an awesome product just took my my presentation to the next level. And when I say my presentation, like for instance, this is one of my sea salt scrubs. And remember when we were talking about the sea scrub mm -hmm. and I said that I'll go in and I'll work with the salt and the carrier oil and then I'll put in the herbs. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've decided is that I really like it when the herbs are not chopped up, meaning that like you can actually see them. And so I feel like it really adds to the gifting prowess of certain recipes from the scrubs to the massaging oils to this product here, which is my JTC soap, which is essentially a comparable recipe to the scrub itself. It's a deep root bath, and so with it, you'll notice like there are the top marigold flowers, and then like right under there, you have your anastar seed. And so with that, if I had decided to chop it instead, you really wouldn't be able to have the beauty of opening up a jar and saying, "Wow, that's pretty." You've got flowers in there, you've got seeds in there, and it smells heavenly and so it ends up being multi-sensory at that point you mentioned the senses earlier in the interview like yes. um tell us more about the importance of the senses and you talked about how your daughter could come in and she may say add a little bit more of this or that can yes. you talk a little bit more about that absolutely with the senses i realized that it varies from individual to individual for some, it may be all about taste. We will invest our money going to the finest restaurants. We want to see how spices marry with one another. For someone else, it may be Chanel perfume that does it for them. They really love the activation of their olfactory system or their sense of smell. For others, it may be touch. They will have to have that weekly massage, even if it costs them $500 a month, they will make it happen. And so, as a multi-sensory company, I have found that I've created products that appeal to various senses. And so, as much as it is, I want it to have rejuvenating or redirecting benefits with the different ingredients. I'm also um, very meticulous about the way that it looks, the way that it's going to smell, and I want to make certain that I'm working with ingredients that for the most part, if it really came down to it and you needed to eat it, then you could. And essentially, that's what should happen with natural skin or hair care. You should be working with ingredients, whether they taste good or not. For the most part, if you're putting it on your skin, you should be able to consume it. And so, you know, there are always asterisks and, you know, special rules to that. But for the most part, 
yes, you should be working with very healthy elements because we talked about the pot marigold flower. We talked about the anise star. Those are both two herbs that do really well as teas. Just put a little hot water on them and let them steep a bit. When you're dealing with people, particularly um, in the African American community, who've been used to like processed products, like how you described yourself as you were bleached and all yes. this, and you transition, like cutting your hair off. When you um, deal with people who are transitioning from that into this more natural kind of way of life and pursuing natural products, how do you help them to understand what you're doing and how you develop or what these products can do for them? First and foremost, it has to be approached with non-judgment. And when I say that, meaning just like how I was in a particular place, and I had somewhere that I had to get to to be able to inspire others, I realized the very same thing happens with the next individual's growth and development. And so I always like to compare in the theory of roots, trees, and flowers. We're all some kind of tree or some kind of flower and we're just growing. For some of us, we may be an African violet or a short little poppy. For others, we may be a hardy gardenia bush. Others may be tall sunflowers. But we all have our purpose. We all have our contributions to society and nature. And so I like to be able to introduce individuals to the line by what's most appealing to them, by what needs they need to address, first and foremost. And then we make our way into it because what the beauty of natural living is essentially is that we inspire one another with our jewels and tools. And so while I may be the official for natural skin and spa wellness, someone else may be the best raw foodist around. And so, and having, with a perm, essentially, we will have that opportunity to engage and learn from one another at that point. And so we take it in steps, and we communicate, and we educate, and we grow, and heal one another. I do have a question. Yes. Um, using live herbs versus dry herbs, mm -hmm. uh, how does that affect your product, or have you experimented? Well, for me, I work with um, dried herbs, and the reason why I work with dried herbs is because for certain products, aside from the soaps, meaning products that don't have any sort of water in them, I would not want to have the potential of spoilage with the live herbs because they have to go through their process of releasing all the moisture, otherwise the decomposition processes could compromise the recipes and it could create spoilage sooner. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a bit more about your candles and some of these other products that you have? Um, the ones that aren't related to the hair and the skin yes. or the scrubs, can you talk to us about that? Uh -huh. So a little bit of spa time essentially. Mm -hmm. and. Spa is probably one of my most favorite pastimes because that's the time that we get a chance to relax and heal and just feel good. And so um, I actually get excited whenever I put one of these in my hands because as simple as this looks, these moonshine mood healing candles require quite a bit of work mm -hmm. and I love the, the day that mother nature said yes you can be a candle maker too and so uh, my candles are unique in that they're shea butter and soy candles mm -hmm. and so while soy can be integrated into a massage I figured that if I infused it with shea butter it would only heighten the properties of the soy and they're really good. I, I picked quality ingredients and even down to the wick I decided that I would go with cotton wicks because it was the most natural way that I could go 
and so I make them to um, customization and with that said there are a few products that I have from the moon belly butters to the JTC scrubs and the JTC soaps here that we looked at a moment ago to the river water skin cooler mm -hmm. which is the hydrating body splash and these are really nice because if you're out and about you live in the south as we do you realize that by the time May or June comes along the sun is beaming brightly so we may not want to have a body butter in our purse this is going to be that natural perfume option that's alcohol free that goes in to give you that reboost of aromatherapy and it hydrates and cools the skin. Mm. So I really like this product. But with this infusion of Jamaican Sunrise, let's say that you purchase the candle from me and you find that Jamaican Sunrise is one of the best aromatherapies that you've come across in a while. I could actually take that infusion and put it in the moon belly butter mm. and the scrubs or the soaps or the river water skin cooler in addition to the candle. So in addition to having like a customized or like a specific line, mm -hmm. people can actually contact you and say, this is what I need or these are the aromas that appeal to me. Do you do custom work like that? Is that what I'm understanding? Yes, I can have that conversation and I like to keep it fairly guided being that I do have so many options but let's say if your spirit spoke to you and there were five essential oils that you just had to have in your bath scrub we could have a conversation and not only could I employ those particular essential oils but if there is a raw bulk herb that I'm able to get I'm able to really make a customization recipe for you that would be like no other. Mm -hmm. Is that the candle I smelled from? That may have been oh, the candle. Man. Yeah, I can smell. I was just like, uh -huh. that mm -hmm. may have been the candle. Yeah, because as soon as you put the top on it, went away. You didn't smell it anymore. Do I just need to open it up a little? I'll keep it open for you while we're <laughs> interviewing because. She liked the breeze. I didn't even realize that you could smell it from yeah. there. Well, I can. I, yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah, so um, customization is really beautiful. It's one of my favorite aspects of the line. But as much as it is, I do enjoy customization. The therapeutic value of the product line far surpasses customization because now that's your challenge to be consistent. Mm -hmm. That's your challenge to really see what your line is about when it comes to various skin conditions, redirecting chronic forms of acne and different forms of dermatitis and eczema, wound healing also. And with wound healing, this particular product is definitely in my top three favorite products this is golden dragon tonic and what this is is a regenerative antiseptic topical product it's in an aloe vera base and so i employ my herbal complex one which is indicated specifically for um, troubled skin and i have tea tree oil which is a great natural antiseptic and golden seal are all within this recipe and so it's going to go in whether you have first degree burn mm. whether you just cut your skin in the kitchen whether you have a spider bite whether you have a boil whether um, you have a dermatitis or an acne breakout this particular product goes in to clean out that site and I would say encourage the regeneration of the cells in a clean environment. And so when I created this recipe, I took my Neosporin and I threw it away and I have not used it since. This, this particular product has a very close face to my heart because the recipe itself did come in a dream.
and I trust that it was given to me by one of my ancestors, one of my native ancestors, and you know, when they appear, you never know who's showing up, and I was happy to know that I had someone in my bloodline that was willing to share with me and formally introduce himself and the way that I knew this to be true was because the dream took place inside of a school and I had never been inside of the school before and it was so clean and so bright in there and this gentleman started walking down the hall toward me and he had two herbs in his hand and he did not tell me what those herbs were and essentially he needed me to gather them and figure out what to do with them and right about that same time there was a serious scalp issue and I trust that it was some form of fungus that my daughter was suffering from and I went and I created that preparation and in about I would say seven to ten days time it had totally clarified her scalp mm -hmm. and it was like one of the most dangerous scalp situations that I've personally been faced with mm -hmm. and so I've seen it several times over not only go in to take care of different scalp conditions but general skin conditions and that's probably the staple recipe that you want to have too for the mosquitoes here in the south. Mm. Can you tell us about your mask, your tribal tea mask? Yes. This is a good recipe. It was actually inspired, I would say, by um, the same basic approach of the Golden Dragon Tonic, but with different ingredients. It's still an aloe vera base, but then I went in and I employed the burdock root and the pot marigold flower and that same herbal complex one that we were talking about to go in to um, not only hydrate but to serve as a refinement tool and so I really like this particular mask as a standalone product after my cleansing and exfoliation steps but sometimes I like to utilize it as an integrative product and so like let's say for the individual who enjoys play masking. Mm. They would love to go ahead and moisten the clay with the tribal tea mask because now instead of just mixing it with water, now you're mixing it with aloe vera and a multitude of herbs is gonna go in to serve the skin well. Mm. And so um, with this particular product here, I've found that I like to activate because I don't have much time. I like to activate my Herbal Fill Skin Slough, which if you notice is a dry product. Mm -hmm. This is a rice and oat scrub. Mm -hmm. And so with it, I get the powers of exfoliation and masking in one step combined. And so I don't know that I could be as great of a facial care specialist without either of these because this is a wonderful granular exfoliant for facial care and this provides me a level of facial refinement that if I don't have a lot of time and I'm needing to get right in and out of the shower I can still get a very polished finish with this product. This gets the dead skin cells off. This goes in and really gives the skin a nice degree of phytonutrients in mass form. Mm -hmm. And while we're talking about phytonutrients, there's one other product that I'd like to talk about, which is the Herbal Fill Skin Cooler. And with this product here, when I made this one, I was very excited because there are a lot of lines out there, but I found one of the things that I would say is more comfortable in commercial skincare lines are toners. Mm -hmm. You don't really hear about toners a lot within um, 
more of the traditional or indigenous lines. And with my um, schooling, I learned the power of a toner. But the difference between a bad toner and a good toner is the alcohol content. Mm. For something that's supposed to nourish the skin, it should not have an ingredient that would go in to take away the hydration faculties. And so I decided to be the toning anti-toner, essentially. I said, no, this is all about hydration. This is all about the phytonutrient boost. This is all about taking care of those cells. This is about redirecting blemishes. And so I'm going to make the happiest alcohol-free toner that I possibly could. And so I went back with the aloe vera as a base and I employed the burdock root. I employed great herbs such as, um, goodness, elderflower, red clover, there's marshmallow in there. I also have um, pot marigold and grapeseed oil, which is a great antioxidant carrier oil. And so, of all of the products that I work with, when you consider customization, I work comfortably with about 50 different herbs for skin and body care. And I only foresee that number growing as I continue my global travel. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah. So is there anything else you'd like to tell us about your products? Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a question. Yes. Okay. So we've seen you evolve as your first before you told the story from bleach to then to removing the bleach and then coming into your own where you were creating the product. When did you transition to say, I want to create spa, like a spa line and do this type of work? Oh, it was always this kind of work, like nothing else came through. Nothing else came through. And that's what lets me know that it was my divine purpose and mission to do this because I'm very artistic. I write. I paint, I do a lot of great things, but this has been the only thing that made me say, I will do this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And in 100 years, people will still celebrate the work that I've done through Honey Supplement and Natural Skin Care. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, yeah, I'll just put it back on. Go ahead. So my question is, can you tell us about um, the symbol that goes along with your product? The Honeysuckle Moon. All right, the Honeysuckle Moon was actually created during a time that I wasn't able to do anything but lay in the bed and sketch. It was right after a major surgery that I had and I was going to be committed to the bed for a few weeks. And so I asked my mother to bring a sketch pad and to bring a mechanical pen and pencil. And I began sketching, and this is actually days upon days upon days of sketch work. And in a former life, a designer's life, I um, learned about the technique stippling. And so with stippling, this moon came forth. And the reason why this moon was selected was because first and foremost, this was my moon. It was mine. If you look at the different spirals in there, if you look at the count, you'll find that there's quite a few fives in there. And five is my number that I consider to be most sacred. And so um, it's my healer's number, essentially. And so with that said, there were a lot of moons prior to this one being constructed, drawn, that I felt did not reflect us from your tattoo shops to your cartoons. Any kind of sketch moon that you would see out there first and foremost always took on a masculine sort of attribute. And I really did not understand that because through my teachings, the moon is feminine. And so I took it as an opportunity to not only create 
a beautiful moon that I saw myself in, but a moon that all persons of indigenous cultures, of comedic culture, could see themselves in. And so this is officially the Honeysuckle Moon. And I, I love the logo. I, um, I created the sketch and just so happened that this logo was actually put together by Jacquez, the brother that you met a little bit earlier. But he took it and he gave it some formal movement for packaging and so as for the sketch itself that you see here that is my own unique sketch and then he made everything set formally for me mm -hmm. yeah but that is the honeysuckle moon thank you yeah it's my pleasure i like that moon <laughs> okay yeah. okay now i'm gonna go shoot them did you develop this when you were pregnant Actually, I didn't. Okay. I'm, I feel like I'm in a consistent phase of mothering, though. And so um, the work definitely appeals to mothers and people who come from mothers. Mm -hmm, it's everybody. I just realized that says water. Yes, <laughs> water. As in um, giving mommy water some honor, you know? Because she deserves her respect too. Oh, okay. Hasn't the rain just been nice to us? Mm -hmm. Cause it was like two, three drops that I came. Know, and then it's been a little sun. Yeah. Got a little bit of everything. 